In my previous video, I talked about how humanity could build a colony on Mars and the moon. Likewise, I talked about how humanity could build various new rocket types to travel in space far more quickly than we currently do. However, what if I were to tell you that we may not even need a rocket for us to get into space, or at least geostationary orbit, the height at which objects can escape the Earth's gravity without constant readjustment. Enter the space elevator. It is a hypothetical elevator that has a counterweight above geostationary orbit that constantly orbits the Earth. And by orbit, we mean constantly moving a circular direction around the Earth so that it never falls to the ground, simply because its direction is constantly shifting sideways. Objects going up on the space elevator would only require an upwards force and would not face an atmosphere acting against it. In pure cost terms, it is estimated that a space elevator would make putting objects into space so cheap that it only costs $220 per kilogram. In comparison, it costs as much as $2,720 per kilogram to send an object up to space via the Falcon Heavy. Likewise, this is cheaper than even what the Starship is projected to cost at $270 per kilogram, assuming that it is reused infinitely. As such, the space elevator would save humanity much money in its future space endeavors. From there, you could launch objects into various worlds from space itself. However, to make such an object, we will need a tether, or the part the elevator travels on and connects the counterweight to the anchor on Earth, that is light and durable. Advances in material science are providing some promising solutions to the issue, such as carbon nanotubes, which are able to withstand 130 gigapascals of pressure. Whatever material we would use would have to provide such support in the face of orbital debris, solar radiation, wind, and other environmental factors. Similarly, it should not deteriorate or at least be repairable when faced with these environmental challenges over the years. However, even if we have a functional space elevator, there is one thing we have to be wary of, terrorism. If we thought that 9-11 was bad, then space elevator terrorism would blow your mind. How much damage will be done will depend on where the space elevator is broken. If the elevator is destroyed near the anchor on Earth, the counterweight would cause the entire space elevator to fly up into space. This would be relatively harmless. However, if the elevator is destroyed closer to the counterweight in space, it would cause the elevator to collapse onto Earth. At about 36,000 kilometers long and a tether weighing at least several million tons, a space elevator collapse will be felt around the world. Cities around the circumference of the fallen space elevator will be severely damaged. As such, no-fly zones will need to be set up around the space elevator and nanobots will have to be deployed constantly to repair the space elevator in order to ensure that it does not lose structural strength. As such, the land surrounding humanity's first space elevator will be highly militarized with missile defense systems to prevent terrorism incidents. However, if done right, the benefits far outweigh the cost. Depending on the thickness of the space elevator's tether, as much as a thousand tons or the mass of the ISS could be sent up to space in one day. Just as the Babel Tower had the potential for allowing humanity to do anything, the space elevator will let humanity press onwards to infinite progress. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, joining our Discord server, and becoming a Patreon. Likewise, please watch either Life After the First Coronavirus Vaccine or What If Biden Became President. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.